Okay, so Pi News episode 39, and this might have come sooner, but a few things cropped up. So first up, great discovery by Jeff Geerling. Uh, in his blog, he's mentioned how some of the Pi 4s are using the Pi 400 CPU. Now the Pi 400 CPU is a slightly higher clock, slightly better cooled CPU, and it's been turning up on Raspberry Pi 4s, and uh, obviously it's really, well, this is a nice big picture, but if you have a look at your own Pi 4, uh, it's not that easy to see with the naked eye. You need some decent light to be able to read it. But uh, what you're looking for on your board to see if you've got the newer CPU uh, is that it's got a C at the end of the model number. Um, and uh, as other people have reported in this blog, some 2 gig Pis have shown up. Uh, Jeff had had it on the 8 gig Pi. And here they are, the two, the old and the new processors. I think I've got only the old ones, although that said, I've got a few inside devices that I haven't got, got out to have a look at yet. Not that it makes too much difference with things like compatibility and speed and things like that. But if you want to see what differences they are, have a look in the blog and all the information is in there. I'll put a link in the description. And next up, we have a new Raspberry Pi website. Uh, basically, what they've done is split up into two. Uh, so you can see from this story, as a lot of you know already, the Raspberry Pi family is actually made up of two organizations, both based in Cambridge, UK. Raspberry Pi Trading, the computer people, and Raspberry Pi Foundation. And basically what they've done is they've uh, put all the sort of charitable side of it and the computer side of it separate uh, so you can look for one or the other. Uh, they'd already made some big changes in documentation and uh, the website is, is definitely getting better and better. Next up is, uh, is a build which was on Reddit and uh, this is a compute module for, lot, I'm seeing lots of compute module for things come up on Reddit and various other places and uh, you can see this one is a very slim handheld. If I flick through the photos of it, you can see it's super slim and you can see the button parts of the board where the compute module 4 goes and it says at the top here only 15 millimeters in depth. Another compute module 4 and uh, I really like the images on this one. Uh, you can see it looks like a switch. Two analog joysticks which is really nice to see and if we flick through really great detail. Let's get this a bit bigger so you can see there's a battery in there Compute Module 4 is here, uh, and I can see that there's a heatsink on the top of that, quite a nice big aluminium heatsink. You can see the speakers on the sides here, and then this board which lets everything be accessible, so the USB-C on the back there. Uh, that says HDMI, although I can't see anything there at the moment. And uh, SD card slot, and that looks like a headphone jack on the back. You can see size-wise that it's very, very similar to the Nintendo Switch. And even these raised triggers are very, very similar. And this etching in the back looks pretty cool. And there's a little active fan in here for extra cooling as well. Yeah, really nice looking project. Really like it when there's two analog sticks because uh, it brings in a lot of the more modern games, which is really nice to see. 95% over the line, final assembly to be done soon. So watch this space. This was only two days ago. And next up was an amazing looking project laser beam profiling with a Raspberry Pi camera. You can see in this picture there's lots of detail, uh, which I didn't really understand, so I googled it. Uh, a beam profile is the 2D intensity plot of a beam at a given location along the beam path. The beam profile indicates nuisance high order spatial modes in a laser cavity as well as hotspots in the beam. Okay, I'm not that clear on it, but it's, uh, it's definitely impressive to see. And you can see there's more detail in here and uh, you can see it's just Raspberry Pi OS running in the background with this custom software that's been created for it. Very, very impressive. It's Foss did a story on Pop OS on Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's not there yet, but uh, it is coming soon, and I think they, yeah, they showed some uh, screenshots here uh, that say, well, this is running on a Pi 400, and the top one, that's also running on a Pi 400. Uh, I covered Pop! OS in this video uh, and actually really liked it. It's based on Ubuntu and uh, it was a nice looking OS and here it is running in this video and it is a really nice looking OS and uh, it's a very popular one. That was why I tried it out for this video and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing that come along. Uh, there is a link in the Tom's Hardware story I found down here but uh, I couldn't find anything that was downloadable. So release packages and packages. They just download very small files. So if I look in my downloads folder, I've probably got loads of stuff in my downloads folder. 
Yeah, they're all just tiny. So I think the download link has probably been taken down, but uh, hopefully it'll appear soon in the future. I really like the look of this one, Raspberry Pi e-ink calendar. So e-ink uh, is a display which stays on without using power. So if you're used to a Kindle, it's the same sort of thing as that. And uh, this, you can take it anywhere, no cable required. It syncs to Google Calendar and gives you lots of up-to-date information. Really, really clever. And uh, yeah, I just like the, like the way that looked. This one adds loads of detail in it. Uh, what's destroying my yard? Pest detection. And you can see there is a Raspberry Pi camera, a motion detector. I've got one of these in my Pico kit. So, and I do mean to do something with the motion detector. I had a few things I thought about and I'd written them down. I just never got back to it really. My yard is under attack. Woodpeckers are drilling holes in my deck. Something is living under and destroying my shed and moles have dug up a series of tunnels. So it uses motion detection. So there's lots of detail about how it's all connected up. Motion detection, take a picture. Yeah, really, really great article, worth having a look through. Another Tom's Hardware, how to build a person following creepy head. Uh, this is also using motion detection. And uh, you can see the, I guess it's a polystyrene head because it's uh, sitting on top of one of these tiny little servos. But uh, yeah, just, just something a bit fun. Uh, you pop it outside your house on Halloween and uh, the, the, to think that it would follow people as they go past, nice and creepy. This freaky Google Assistant work in progress. Uh, so if I click on this, it's uh, Terminator 2 Skull and uh, it's intended to work with Google Assistant. And just the, the eyes and the way the mouth is opening and closing is, is yeah, very creepy, right in time for Halloween. Saw this story on Reddit, Techmoan Review opens up the Co-Turn CTO1 turntable and finds a Pi Zero W. So we have a look at the video, obviously I can't play the video but I can show some stills from it. So you can see from this image it's a very compact turntable and looks really cool. But if we go a bit further on into the video, when he takes it apart, there is a Raspberry Pi Zero inside. Unusual Raspberry Pi case here. Uh, this is, I think it's a Raspberry Pi 4 in there. I can't see it in the description. Let's have a look at the picture and we'll see it. But uh, it's made out of cardboard. So if you have a Pi and you don't yet have a case uh, and you want to be able to put it in a case, you can take some inspiration from this and build one from cardboard. You can see the lid pops off. It's got active cooling. I see the fan in there. Yeah, so it is a Pi 4 in there. I've made my fair share of things out of cardboard in the past. Another one from Reddit, Game Gear Compute Module 4 Drop-In Kit Running RetroPi. Uh, you can see the Compute Module 4 here, you can see the uh, controller bits on the board and uh, if we flick through the pictures, there you go. For the size of the machine obviously it's quite a small display but I really do like the project and obviously RetroPi runs great on the Pi. Now I couldn't find a lot of detail on this, uh, Prototype Raspberry Pi Gaming UMPC. You can see it's got two analog sticks, digital pad, uh, full keyboard, I thought it looked really cool. But when you click on it, it doesn't actually tell you much about it. So it says here, thanks, it's still a work in progress. I probably bit off a little more than I could chew being my first hardware project. I'm looking to eventually put all the FreeCAD, KiCAD and STL files up on GitHub once it's a little less held together with duct tape and string. But it'd be nice to see some more images of the inside of it. More Reddit, uh, rubbery look, Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen case made of Lego bricks. You can see here, uh, it just is a Raspberry Pi tablet, basically. And I uh, always like to see things with a bit of Lego. You can see the back is uh, needs some work. It's still a bit open. But, uh, but yeah, I just thought it looked cool. And this got me looking at other Lego things, uh, which I'd done in the past on Raspberry Pi. So here we've got easy to build Lego Pi 3 or 4 case. Here we go. Nice detailed uh, video of building it all up. I won't leave it playing. And you've got these little windows uh, for the ports and a nice touch with the raspberries on the top. And then I just Googled images and found some really cool Raspberry Pi projects. So you can see here, uh, Raspberry Pi case here, a NES case, some doors for all the ports, some active cooling on this one I thought was really nice to see. Uh, quite a decent sized fan, so that might run nice and quiet. Interesting looking one there. More of the technical side of Lego here. Anyway, I'll carry on looking at these. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.